Well, I am so excited you're joining us because I've got a remarkable young entrepreneur today who is going to share some great life lessons he's learned along the way and all along how you can be hyper productive. How many of us as entrepreneurs run out of energy? It's so easy to do. And how can you maintain your health? You know, we're, we're all managing our energy. We only have so much. and We've got to make sure it's used effectively. But at the same time, how can we have fun? How can we have great relationships and really build the life of our dreams? Well, this remarkable entrepreneur is not only building a great life, he's built many a great businesses. He is a marketer at heart. He's done over 12,000, count that, 12,000 marketing experiments. And they, some of them have worked really well. He's built five companies from zero to over seven figures. Wow. Some great life lessons, a phenomenal entrepreneur. I'm John Bowen, you are at AES Nation. It's all about accelerating your entrepreneurial success. Stay tuned, you don't wanna miss this. Ordinary success? No way. You want amazing, remarkable, exceptional breakthroughs. Dig deep, think bold, drive hard, watch yourself soar beyond your dreams, AESNation.com. I am so excited to have you here. You are traveling one of the longest distances, at least electronically, of the interviews. Uh, I, I, Panama City, you're in Panama, yes. I know. Okay. I'm in Panama City, Panama. Well, so Matt, first of all, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man, it's great. Well, and you know, one of the things that was so great, uh, we had the opportunity to meet through uh, uh, Jason at Mastermind Talks and just phenomenal uh, uh, bringer together of extremely successful entrepreneurs. And you have done some amazing things in your career. And, and you know, not a, none of us got out of life unscarred. So you've had some bounces along the way, some great lessons though. And then when we've talked, I, I wanted to really share it with our audience. Um, before we go into those life lessons though, share with me a little bit of how you got to where you are. Yeah, so I'm gonna give it to you real quick, real fast, but uh, from, a, from a village of 350 people, literally my parents are in a dead end street where there's like five cars a day that drive by. Well, and I, and uh, I did, Matt, I did look <laughs> at the picture on the website and I grew up in upstate New York in a small town of 4,000 and I felt mine was a city looking at where you grew up. Yeah, and, and part of what happened was I, I hated the small mindedness and that really drove me to, to want a different life and become an entrepreneur. So went to university, studied uh, science and physical activity, kinesiology, and my, my game plan was always to be an entrepreneur in the health business. So got out, uh, did some personal training, Built a, I think it was the first personal trainer in that city. It was a city of 100,000 people called Moncton and uh, became pretty successful. And I was also doing a lot of things simultaneously. So I was studying copywriting, st studying marketing. I was uh, hosting and marketing some self-defense seminars. I did about 35 seminars in like six, day, uh, six years. And then I moved to Vancouver, uh, built a new bit personal training business from scratch. And it was really hyper competitive, but with the marketing abilities and skills that I'd learned, I was able to become, I think, the second or the, first, the busiest trainer at World's Gym downtown Vancouver. And again, it was because I was the, the most fit guy or, or I had no championships or nothing. It was just marketing, right? And uh, then I had a, a personal training client that had a private labeling skincare company. And she said, you know what, I'll create a, a serum for you, an anti-aging uh, skin serum. So that was my first big success and I had been studying copywriting for about three or four years at that time and launched it, made five figures uh, first month. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And then from there, I just parlayed those skills, um, built a, a health business called Bioptimizers now where we help people uh, optimize their health and we fix digestion. So that business started around 12 years ago. Then partnered up with the, another a student of mine who was teaching, who was hiring me to help him with marketing. And we built Guitar Control, which has been around for also up around 12 years. And along the way, just uh, built a lot of different businesses. 
And also around that time, um, I got divorced at 28, and I was just ready for a global adventure. I like I like uh, pushing myself. I like being in foreign lands. So I just flew to Panama, never even visited, just got on a plane and moved. And uh, you know, got into all kinds of uh, debauchery and trouble for a few years, and then uh, clean my, clean up my act. And now I'm really focused on building some businesses that. Um, First of all, I'm passionate about because I, I just can't energize myself to do things that I don't love, and second, that will make the world a better place. So I have a few other companies right now, including uh, Energy Psychology Certification. I'm partners with Dawson Church, who's one of the top experts in the world. I'm really passionate about that. And I do a lot of pay for performance optimization where I, I leverage those 12,000 marketing experiments. And if I move the needle for companies, they reward me based on what how much I, I generate for them. Well, so that's the gist. Yeah, I can say, wow, uh, this is, you know, you know, I'm not thinking you're much of a slacker here at all, Matt. I didn't think that ever. I mean, I didn't know you were doing all those things. So uh, I want to dive in before we kind of get into life lessons. You know, one of the things that entrepreneurs think of living in different areas, maybe just high level, you know, as you know, you went, you know, you're tw I think you said 28 as you went to Panama City at 28 yep. were a little different. You know, didn't have, you know, it was kind of a fun thing. It sounded like you were, you know, partied a bit and all that. Yep. And then now you got all these businesses. How, mm -hmm. how is it um, living in Panama and Panama City and running these businesses that I'm assuming are done also outside of, you know, kind of global player as well? Yeah, all the companies are virtual, and uh, yeah, it's fine, it's great. You know, I think, I think the biggest thing to realize is like we're always in a box, right? So like becoming born in that small little village, there was a box there. Then I moved to a city of 100,000 people. It was different. Then I moved to Vancouver, so I got out of the New Brunswick box, went to a real city, and then when I left Canada, I realized, well, there's another box that I just jumped out of. And if I could go to another planet, I'd probably look at Earth and say, wow, I just escaped another box. Uh, and when I say box, I just mean cultural biases, perspective. And one of the great things about moving to a different country and really assimilating yourself is you realize, well, there's a lot of different ways to live life. There's a lot of different ways to, to be. And uh, that's one of my favorite things about it. So. Yeah, no, I think one of the things I, I have, uh, I haven't lived in another country, but I have worked in another country in the sense mm -hmm. I had a commute <laughs> and uh, to a couple of times when I was doing some global things. And, you know, when you do that, when you stop being a tourist and you become a traveler, and in your case, you're really a resident, um, you know, the, the, it really opens up your mind. And, you know, and, and particularly in the virtual businesses, you can pretty much be anywhere. You've got to decide what really makes you productive and that goes to kind of my first uh really lesson that you shared with me when we we're getting ready to go on camera and I you know I was looking at all your websites and everything you're doing and I mean you are <laughs> hyper productive and this is something that in today's world there's so much noise out there and you know being able to focus and and be extremely productive and not be distractive why don't you share how you're doing that yeah, so uh, there's a lot to it, and it's it's been a, a long road of evolution. So I kind of started at the beginning because I don't know where uh, the people listening are at. But you know, when I was in my 20s, <laughs> and my goal was hyper productivity, I ended up I think at the peak I was working 90 hours a week. I was in the gyms, and you know, probably 100 hours if I count all the other things I was doing, like studying, copy, and stuff. Um, and and you know, hit the wall with that, obviously crashed and burned. And uh, then I'm like, okay, well, I, I got to find a better way. So the next evolution was really uh, building teams, right? So you start off, you're a one-man show, maybe a two-man show. The first thing you want to do is just offload everything that drains you, everything you don't like to do, everything that you're not good at doing. And one of the ways to accelerate that learning curve is to do every personality test out there, Colby, DISC, strength finder, um, you name it, I've done it. And there's a lot of power in, in knowing, okay, you know what, I'm a quick starter or I've got zero follow through or whatever it is that you are and start making adjustments in terms of, okay, well, I better, I better pull in the right person to 
accentuate my weaknesses. And the biggest jump, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll skip forward a few years. This was about five years ago. The biggest jump was realizing that I needed integrators. One of my favorite books is Rocket Fuel, uh, written by Mark Winters and Gino Wickman. And they revealed and clarified that, okay, there's visionaries and integrators. You know, there's people that have big ideas, strategy, that's my, that's my forte. And then there's people that are really good at making things happen and following through and organizing and structuring. And when I realized that, then I, I immediately saw, okay, my mission now for, for increasing my capacity is to bring in as many integrators as possible and build great relationships and great teams and great structures. So that that's probably the, the biggest multiplier. But then we can get down to, to let, let's say you, you've got that, right? And let's say you know what your superpowers are and you know what your strengths are. Then it's about maximum productivity, right? Hyper productivity. And I call it focus savagery. <laughs> and I want to I want to explain that term. I got, I got a little scared with that one, so we got to have some clarity here. Yeah, focus savagery. You know, and and it's like people are too lackadaisical, I think, when they're working. So let's say I'm writing a blog post. You know, there's there's a an intensity that I'm I'm focusing on generating, and you know, just like in the gym and a lot of different areas of life, intensity is something that we build over time. So. At this point, I've you know if you see me on the computer or you see me working, it's like I can just about every single task I can do uh, a third or the fourth of the time of a lot of my team members. For example, writing an email, I could write a marketing email about 15 minutes. Most people it takes them 60 minutes. So that's where you start multiplying your time because you know if I can do things three times faster, that's multiplying my output 3x. And that's it. so you have to organize and structure your life where you're just doing the things that you're great at, that you love to do, and then you sprint. One of my favorite books is The Powerful Engagement. And when I read that, I went from, from time management to energy management. And when you master, you know, doing 60 to 90 minute sprints, some people do, you know, Pomodoro 25, 33 minutes, whatever it is for you and you just go full tilt and then recover, take a break, relax, get out of focus savagery, and then boom, turn it back on, turn it back off. That process is really how you multiply your effectiveness. Um, and of course, there's exceptions that when you're in team meetings and groups and stuff like that, you don't wanna be, <laughs> you don't wanna be a savage. But when it's you doing your deep work, doing what moves the needle for your business, that's the mindset. Uh, I mean, I think, Matt, that just you shot so much stuff out at once. Well, let me ask, the power of full engagement or is it power? Yeah, Jim yeah, Lair. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Jim. Yeah, that's, actually, that's I ran a series of coaching programs with Jim during right. the darkest hours of uh, financial services. One of the biggest firms in the country, I think the biggest at the time, hired us at 2008 to take care of their top 100 guys and they recognize the power of health, but also in our case, we're showing them you know, really how to design their business to serve their clients. And um, I'd recommend that strongly, that book, uh, Powerful Engagement. He also wrote a book called Corporate uh, Athlete. And you know, as fellow entrepreneurs, one of the things I wanna get to next because of your background in health, but so many of us, you know, we wanna be hyper, uh, productive. Well, if we don't have health. We, that just kind of kills everything right away. It does. Yeah. But what what I I love what you shared uh, the you know getting clear first on you know the self assessment and I'm a big believer in the test as well and I've taken all the ones that you have and a few more uh, from uh, there's a fellow I did a podcast uh, I don't know if you were at Jason's event last year Mastermind Talks us. Uh, Steve Sisler and Steve I've hired and he does a whole bunch even more assessment and you know it's just it's really powerful you know getting to know ourselves and then what I really love is how you you know one of the things as kids at least in my class when I was growing up you know we were taught to really work on our weaknesses oh, well, mm -hmm. who wants to end their career with strong weaknesses I mean let's build on those unique strengths as you said and and you know, build the high performance team. That's how we can become 
productive. I mean, I've got just, I really, I have three businesses that are just all doing very well. And, and uh, you know, it's the team. I mean, just having the right people that I couldn't do most of what they do. Some of it, I don't even really understand what it is. And uh, Mark Winters and uh, Gina Wickman are both in my strategic coach program. I sit with them every once in a while. And I love that book, uh, Rocket Fuel, because yeah, I always thought of a CEO, COO, they take it a little clearer, visionary and integrator. Mm -hmm. But, you know, most of us as entrepreneurs, we don't have a problem painting a picture of what we want. We have a problem of getting it done and getting right. the right integrator, as you said. So and then that focus intensity, I mean, that's just so huge. But I want to take it back because you're, you're in a neat, unique, uh, you know, you've you've came up in the fitness health field. Uh, but you, you know, went out, unlike very many people in that field, you know, went out to the best copywriters and the marketing and you, you spent a lot of money. I saw through, you know, a lot of the gurus out there and some worked, some didn't work. But um, I want to hit you on what you grew up with first. And I know what you do uh, still, you know, health is really important to you. H how do you see your fellow entrepreneurs really, you know, taking this health and it's Jim Lohr talks about the powerful engagement. I mean, it's not time, it's energy and deploying it. And we've got to be in good shape right. to do that. Yeah. You know, I think ultimately our, our capacities as entrepreneurs, uh, short term and long term will be limited by our health. Right. So, there's nothing more powerful than increasing our, our energy. So, you know, and I'm not, I'm going to skip the fitness stuff because most people are aware. Um, and you don't need to be going crazy in the gym and looking like a bodybuilder to get gains, you know? So whatever my, my biggest tip for health is just find something that you love to do that you enjoy doing and just do it on a regular basis. Let's talk more maybe about, um, sleep, and a, a couple of other things. So the, probably the biggest thing that's moved the needle for me the last couple of years has been getting into uh, some sleep optimizations. I'll spend about 25 grand on my on my sleep system up to this point, and uh, it's just transformed my my energy and a lot of other things. You know, my my fat loss and all kinds of things. So what I didn't realize, and I got into sleep in my 20s and read a, a really good book, I think it was called Power Sleep, but I didn't know that my sleep was garbage until I bought what's called an Oura Ring, O-U-R-A, and started looking at the data. And one of the things about me, and it's a great life lesson we'll get to later maybe, is that great data shapes destinies. And this is one of, this is one of my uh, best examples of that. So I started looking at the data and I realized, wow, like zero, six minutes, 10 minutes of deep sleep. And if you don't know this, well, your deep sleep is where all your hormones get produced. This is where your body recovers. This is where testosterone is made, growth hormones made. So if you're not achieving deep sleep, none of that is happening. And for me, it wasn't. So I invested, and I'm just gonna like rapid fire a bunch now, of this tips, is, so. you know what, I haven't, this is an area, Matt, that quite honestly, okay. I haven't done as much. And I haven't, I think we're at 200 interviews, so I'd love to hear this, and I know our listeners would too, because if we're gonna have, you know, I, I know I shouldn't eat, you know, I gotta have a good diet, I gotta exercise, okay, and there's a couple of other things along the way, and sleep recharging is just so important. Well, it's everything, right? Because all your neurotransmitters get rebuilt, which is what you're using all day to be creative, to, to, to push your brain. So it's brain and body. You know, the REM is your brain and the deep sleep's your body. So yeah, I'm just gonna rapid fire and it's, all this stuff's been validated with, with the ring. First thing is uh, get off a spring coil mattress and get um, ideally an organic memory foam mattress. I really like Essentia, E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A. They make uh, memory foam mattresses out of a tree sap so there's no off gassing. And uh, you can even get a custom made one, so, which is what I did. So my wife has her side customized, my side. That, that alone will transform your sleep because what happens is when you're, when you're sleeping on your side, for an example, as soon as the blood pressure uh, or the blood constriction starts happening in your shoulder, for an example, your body's gonna toss and turn. So what you want, you wanna spread your weight as evenly as possible, and the only way to do that is really with a high quality 
uh, memory foam technology. So that's number one. Two, cold, right? So cold is key. And I've always slept in a pretty cold room, but recently, about a year and a half ago, I bought a chili pad that Tim Ferriss recommended, and that was transformative because, uh, again, I have been eyeing that. That looks really good. So I, I want to hear it's this. It's great. It's great because, again, as soon as your body gets hot, you're going to toss and turn. Mm -hmm. So a, a good friend of mine who his sleep was also in the garbage, he just got one um, a week ago, and his deep sleep doubled like that. So that that's a big one. And how, uh, how, again, no get, how it, noisy is it, uh, Matt? Um, it's like a it's like kind of like an air conditioner, okay. which I like. I like having white noise mm -hmm. in my room. I have an AC on and that, so you don't really hear it that much. All right, the next one is darkness, and when I say darkness, like you can't, you shouldn't be able to see your hands. So I've got like two layers of blackout curtains. I mean, you can't see a single thing. Even all the LED lights in your bedroom, you should cover them with black tape or whatever, because even if you wear an eye mask, which I did for a long time, well, your skin have photoreceptor, photoreceptive cells, and if the light hits that, it's gonna disrupt your melatonin and mess up your deep sleep. So that's another big one, is absolute darkness. Um, the next piece is your brain. And uh, I've done a lot of neurofeedback, which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, that's another rabbit hole we can get into. But bottom line is a lot of entrepreneurs, they their brains are in beta all the time, right? And that's not a good thing. You wanna be able to shift and shift states and slow your brain waves down. So whatever you gotta do, like two hours or three hours before bed to start shifting your brain, whether that's meditating, getting in a bath, uh, getting off the electronics, or whatever, that is gonna make a big difference. And going back to light, another one that is transformative, and everybody that I've recommended to, they're skeptical at first, including myself, but when you use it, it works. Get the blue light blocking glasses, and wear, wear them two, three hours before, because again, the data doesn't lie, and it, it cranks your deep sleep up significantly. So then we can get into supplements and things like that. Um, going back mm -hmm. to the brain waves, L-theanine um, will produce more alpha brain waves. There's a, a great product called Lavella, L-A-V-E-L-A. -E it's a lavender oil uh, pill that has been proven to also improve alpha brain waves. So alpha is a lot slower than beta, so it's, it's a step obviously in a way to deep sleep. Then I use all kinds of sleep technologies like Earth Pulse, which is Magnet magnets you put under your mattress which um, put out a delta frequency one of my favorites is called the delta sleeper and you put it right here on your brachial nerve and it sends delta pulses to your brain it's about 500 bucks it's great for traveling too so when you travel it's all, it gets a little harder to get some good sleep um, I think I'm going to stop there. I can I, go. I've got, yeah, you're reminding me. I don't know if you know Dave Asprey. Well, you yeah. met Dave probably at the event and we're friends, uh, Bulletproof Coffee. And I think, I don't know, you two guys, I mean, you know, I'm feeling like I'm going to get extremely healthy if I just hang out with you here because <laughs> uh, it is amazing. And, and Dave uh, and I have been in Genius Network, Joe Polish, for these several years. And uh, every time I sit next to him, he's giving me all these new things that I got to try. And, and, and many of them have made a difference. So I encourage people, you know, not everything's right for everyone, but to, to see what works for you, because the ability to biohack this stuff is just really amazing. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. And the thing is, you, the thing is, you're going to sleep anyways, right? So if you can double and triple and quadruple your deep sleep like I have, I mean, right now I'm sleeping about 45 minutes less than I used to. I used to wake up feeling kind of groggy um, and not energetic, so now I wake up feeling great and I've got 45 more minutes in my day and I've just got more brain capacity all day long. So, it, like ROI wise, I don't care. If you're an entrepreneur, and, and this, this is a key mindset, right? Mm -hmm. If you're an entrepreneur, investing in your health is such a no-brainer. Like, I did the math, I'm like, okay, if I spend $25,000 building a great sleep system, that's gonna end up making me millions. I mean, I did the math, it's millions of dollars over time. Um, so it plus better health and just feeling better. So no, I'm a, I'm a financial guy and I look at the return on investment of investing in ourselves. I mean, that's yeah. human capital is just the best thing we can do almost always. And as we talk about that, let's 
let's go to uh, great relationships because you know, I mean, we're, you know, we're hyper productive. We're making a real big dent, you know, in our business. We've got this high performance team with us. We got tons of energy, um, mm -hmm. but that's not enough. No, it's not because you know, honestly, I I was doing that stuff uh, for a long time, and it was only until I, I really built you know, some uh, brother level relationships with fellow men that it really gave me a different level of happiness, right? So like we can get caught up in being hyper productive and focus savagery and building million dollar companies and, and there's a certain pleasure and joy and fun in that. But at the end of the day, um, there's few things that have given me more happiness than, than hanging out with great people and like people that, it doesn't matter where they are in the world when you hang out. Um, it's just nothing but love. And that that's a, that's definitely one of the best things for happiness. And if they did that, right, they did the research, I think it's run, been running for seven decades, and they found that the number one thing for long-term happiness is those kind of relationships. So it was good validation to see that. But that's been my personal experience as well. No, and mine as well. I mean, it's just... It is so important. And you know, one of the things I love about mastermind groups too is it's so hard. I mean, I'm in Silicon Valley. There's no shortage of entrepreneurs, but getting mm -hmm. people that have the same mindset and getting together at these events can be just really extremely powerful uh, along mm -hmm. the way. You know, and we can have friends that are non-entrepreneurs too for a little balance in life, but the, you know, this is uh, a great way of doing it too. Let's get into the spiritual perspective too because this is something you know this means different things to different people and mm -hmm. you know if we're going to have a complete life I, I always think of businesses you know the mistake I made when I was young and it sounds like you did it as well as you know I'm in business for more business I can still remember my wife calling me at two in the morning uh, and like why are you still at the office doing this stuff and I, I'm writing some early financial planning software and so on and it's like it's got to get done well no it really doesn't but uh, you know we just kind of miss part of life and we think that's how we're going to get high performance and that, that's not it and and then you know we, we kind of miss out on really you know the we're in business for a great quality of life not for more business and a great quality of life particularly on the spiritual side is just so important but what does that mean to you matt yeah i mean <laughs> uh it means a lot it means everything like I, I really feel that as human beings we're here to evolve spiritually like that's why i'm here i think that's why everybody's here and uh, that's not how I used to think. I mean, I, I was raised very religious. Then I became pretty hardcore atheist agnostic for about a decade. And uh, thanks to some friends and, and some other experiences, I, I got back on the spiritual path. And it's become, it's the foundation of my life. You know, when, when I'm spiritually fit, and I, and I look at it very much like health, you know, like we, if I don't work out for two months, so well, I'm, I'm going to be out of shape. So when I'm spiritually fit, nothing can really affect me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really bulletproof. It's feel, it feels like I've just got this shield that you can come at me with bad news and I'll just, I'll be at peace with it. So we're talking about serenity, um, you know, as a daily thing. And, and serenity is something that once I experienced, uh, I'll do everything I, that I need to do to maintain that. So I think everybody should uh, look at building a spiritual program that works for you. You know, for some people, religion works. Um, some things that have worked well for me has been uh, the Course of Miracles. Uh, Twelve-step programs are amazing as well because it's it's all based on spiritual principles. Um, meditation's great, but. You know, even business for me, like business, I look at business as a spiritual path. Mm -hmm. I look at, okay, you know, I, I've, I'll give you an example. So I, I've always been kind of the behind the scenes guy in, in all the businesses. And a lot of it was because of some tra trauma that happened in my teenage years. I was a musician. I, I released, uh, we recorded some, some music when I was like 13. And I got blasted pretty hard, you know, because <laughs> I sucked. You know, I was a horrible singer. I can laugh at that now. It was I wasn't laughing then, and it was traumatic, you know, because here I am, the front guy, and I got hurt, right? 
And then only with some spiritual work, doing some forgiveness work, was I able to undo that. And now um, I'm comfortable being the front guy. So that, that's an example of spiritual work. I had this block. I had this thing limiting me as a human being, limiting me as an entrepreneur. And I used spiritual tools to eliminate that, which is now allowing me to be on podcasts like this, to have a blog, uh, to release my YouTube channel, which is coming out soon. So that that's a, just a very specific nugget, an example of, again, doing spiritual work to, to undo the blocks. Um, and we all have things that are challenges and limitations and traumas that, that stop us, that, that limit us. And I think having a spiritual perspective and spiritual tools to work through that is one of the greatest things that anyone can do. No, I, I, I'm going to second that. It's just, it's really powerful because I mean, you know, as we were talking about, I mean, nobody gets through life unscarred and, you know, uh, the shit happens, things come at us and, you know, unless we have a strong foundation, it's really easy to get off in wrong directions and, and it, and it can be huge and it can, be, you know, it can destroy lives and it does. And, you know, this is where that power within, you know, and connect with uh, whatever your belief is a greater being. But let, let's let's come back. You know, one of the things I opened with on your introduction, because it was kind of a wow, um, you know, 12,000 marketing experiments. And I'm looking through, you know, I, I joked when we were getting on that you have I, you know, I have a personal story. I do a video and I'm a big believer in sharing stories. It, it kind of helps frame, you know, our relationships as we met. You, you've got, I can see the copywriting experience because you've got five parts on it, but there are five unique <laughs> parts along the way too. And you've been a lifelong learner. Sometimes you've signed up for the program. Other times life is just giving you the lesson, uh, not for free. They're never for free. But tell, tell me what it means to you to be an experimenter. I mean, you've, you know, the, you've done a lot more than myself. And, and quite honestly, I think I'm, myself is a pretty big experimenter too. Yeah, I think every entrepreneur, I think one of the greatest tools, and just even as a human being, is to be an experimenter. And most people aren't. You know, most people, the path of least resistance to just keep doing the same thing you've been doing over and over and over again. However... Uh, what's great about online businesses and websites and things like that, there's tools like split testing software that allows us to actually test two different ideas. Like, you know, for example, testing different images of yourself will have shocking results. I've never seen, I've never seen it not move the needle massively one way or another. And sometimes it's like 50% an increase. So imagine if you, you know, you're making $100,000 a month or a million dollars a month, and you changed one picture, and now you're making 50% more revenue. I've seen that more times than I can count. Yeah. Um, let, me, let me stop you, Matt, because I, yeah. I just want to echo that one. This is one of my wows to me growing up in the financial side. And I started uh, Joe Polish's Genius Network. I joined it 2009, and I met, that was my first exposure. I didn't know what SEO was, didn't know any of the internet stuff, other than what I knew from Silicon Valley, just you know, consumer and financial stuff going through the pipes. But uh, I started seeing the split test and it's like, wow. I mean, talk about, I love statistics from math and, you know, from financial markets. And to be able to test things now, I mean, you and I could test things for a hundred bucks and yeah. tell whether there's a 20% gain. I mean, that, you know, this is crazy. And most people don't do it. Even entrepreneurs don't do it. Actually, that's like that's. I'm just be completely frank. It's the most baffling thing to me that in the internet space, entrepreneurial space, is is that people don't test. Um, even a lot of my friends that are you know copywriters and marketers, they're like, no, I'm done. I wrote the letter. It's working. Well, guess what? You're you're leaving a fortune on the table. Like if if you start testing in 60 days from now, 90 days from now, you probably increase your revenue 50 percent, 100 percent. Um, and all costs stay the same, right? Relatively. So it's, it's the biggest thing that probably people should be doing. And it's the biggest leverage point. Like, here's the thing. People think it's going to take a lot of time. It takes me probably 30 to 60 minutes max for each one of my companies a week to create the next wave of tests. And of course, you know, your webmaster goes and sets it up and then it takes sometimes a week or two weeks or longer to hit 
statistical validity. So it's not like it's that much work. If you got one company and you're not getting that much traffic, it might be literally 15 minutes a week uh, of coming up with one new idea. But that 15 minutes could double your revenue in the next 12 months. So, and I think it's just a great mindset to have again with everything. Like again, great data shapes destinies, whether it's with sleep, um, with body fat. Like I, I had a body fat test done by a DEXA about two and a half years ago and it changed my life because you know I thought I was using some other techniques some other methods and uh, it was telling me one thing and I got on the DEXA which is 100% accurate and it told me another one I'm like whoa you know because it measures all your visceral fat all the fat inside your body so I'm like well I better start doing some changes and I have and that's the power of great data and that's the power of, of, of experimentations so I think for everybody that's listening you know just Use whatever split testing software that's out there, VWO um, or whatever, and just tell your webmaster, hey, you know, let's test this, let's test that, um, and we can get more tactical here. But the top of the fold of your website is almost the biggest thing to move. So headline, images are huge, design is always big, and then your offer, whatever it is that you're offering, is also significant. But yeah, at any one time, I'm probably testing 100 to 200 different things with all my clients and all my websites. So it just allows me to, to, uh, to, to figure out a lot of things that are counterintuitive too. Here's the thing, like I learned from quote unquote a lot of the best copywriting mentors and teachers, but the truth is 50% of what they told me was truth was wrong. And you only know that when you start testing, right? So at some point, some guy told them one thing and then it gets passed on as gospel, but unless you test things, you don't know. No, I, I just remember one of the first times I hired one of the famous copywriters to do a big project with me. And I wrote and ran against it just more as a fun control process. Right. And I beat him by about 20%. And it was, you know, there's a little bit of industry knowledge versus the marketing that time at one. And, but, you know, this is one, I mean, Matt, you're making me feel guilty. I, I do it pretty regularly, but I'm, I'm, next conversation with my team we're going to be doing it more because it's 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 really it's free money if you're doing it in light and self-interest but it's also you know each of us has something we're bringing to the world to make better and if mm -hmm. you can't get it out i mean it, it just miss yeah. it you yeah. know let, let, let's go well, let me go to just a segment on resources and what i'd like to do matt is i'm gonna pull up your website uh, MattGaunt.tv. Uh, TV. Tell us a little bit about what you're blogging, and then the book that you have, and you know, really any of the services. You know how you know uh, our listeners, our fellow entrepreneurs, you know where they might want to uh, connect with you and use you. Yeah, cool. Yeah, the blog is really just a passion project. There's no big uh, business intent or whatever. It's just me sharing a lot of the stuff. Uh, on you know deeper articles on marketing and health and optimization and things, so I think guys are on 80 articles on there. There's also two books. Uh, the one I would recommend everybody check out is uh, Three Extra Productivity, Triple Your Productivity, where I go really deep. It's 80 pages. It's not a, a flimsy uh, little PDF. So it's 80 pages of of really step by step how to structure your time. To, to triple your productivity. Like I only work about 25 to 35, 40 hours a week and I run six companies and that's the process that I do it with. Um, so yeah, it's it's a great resource. And uh, if anybody has um, some websites that they are making at least $100,000 a month and they want someone like me to take care of their optimization, um, that's what a lot of people choose to do. Like going back to a lot of people don't want to do it for whatever reason. I love to do it. I'm really good at it, and uh, a lot of companies are bringing me on to do it for them. And it's a pay for performance model. So if you have any questions around that, there's a form on the site. People can fill it out, and we can have a conversation. Matt, I, I really want to thank you. First of all, uh, super enjoyable. I, I feel healthier already and more <laughs> successful. Well, let me do the key takeaways uh, that I'm walking away with. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's just so many. There's no way. Uh, you got to read the transcript. We'll have the show notes, you know, aesnation.com. 
Uh, but you know, the opportunity to be hyper productive, uh, you know, Matt gave us so many ideas and then the energy to fulfill that, you know, not only, you know, it's not all about us, it's our team and really having the right group and making sure we, you know, whatever role we have, whether we're the visionary or the integrator, that we got all of the roles covered and focus, focus, focus. Great relationships are just so important. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, just bonding uh, beyond ourselves. It's so easy to get caught up in ourselves, particularly in the virtual businesses, spiritual, the, the ability to, to, to really be complete. And then the, the experimental, I mean, we're, we're all experimenting in life. Let's be thoughtful about how we do it and uh, make a difference. Matt, uh, some great ideas. Again, uh, above me, asnation.com. All the show notes are there. Everything's there. Uh, make sure to go back. Your clients, your customers, your future clients and customers, they're counting on you. Don't let them down. Wish you the best of success. Exceptional, remarkable breakthroughs. AESNation.com.